to another episode of Geeky Gentlemen. We're doing something we don't do in Geeky Gentlemen very often, which is a commentary. I don't think we've ever done these. Um, what the fuck? But this is... <laughs> yeah, no, already. Okay, I'm already here for it. Uh, so this happening? is Doctor Who Dimensions of Time. Why are their heads floating? Oh, that's so I don't scary! Know. <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking that's as scary as the fucking actor okay okay all right i have no context someone explain who is the doctor right now what's happening uh there was technically no doctor right now like i guess technically it's sylvester mccoy um but like the show is off the air right now and this is a botched attempt to save it by putting it on with the east enders which is like a fucking soap opera basically oh fantastic (laughs) I know. I don't know. What yeah, this was, this was called the Wilderness Years, where Doctor Harry was cancelled and everyone didn't know if it was going to come back. Oh my god. What this is, is this? Is he inside the mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell? <laughs> <laughs> Why does he look like Gender Bet Carmen San Diego? Oh my god. Oh. Yeah. Oh my god. Stop with what these is heads. Happening? Please, God, stop with these heads. <laughs> okay, this is vital plot information. Yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to listen. I'm trying to listen, and it's not even because you guys are talking that's the hard part. Like, the audio mixing here is garbage. Yeah, no, you can barely hear him. Yeah, yeah. Oh, hello. Yeah, hello, I'd like to order a... Oh. <laughs> yeah, can I get a big ma- Oh, okay. That's what's behind the roundels? <laughs> it's just fucking dudes? <laughs> so I, I guess they captured one and two? Well, no, because they fucking died. <laughs> yeah? Well, like, just, that's the weirdest way to do it, by just making really shitty 3D models of their heads? What? What year was this? 90-something. Yeah. I I almost refuse to believe this is from the 90s. It looks way too garbage. (laughs) 90s for BBC. Oh, well, that's fair. Oh, yeah. Fair Um, enough. I forget you guys are out in the backwoods over there. (laughs) Yeah. They just got HD television. They're very excited about it. Was, was this aspect ratio a technical limitation or is Zack Snyder our tour choice? I, I'm going to go with technical limitation. <laughs> I'm going to go with Snyder. Snyder <laughs> the blueprint. <laughs> oh, that's right. This is like that weird thing where it was in... Whoa, what? Yeah, so the doctor keeps changing in this. This is the premise. But then why do the companions change? I don't know. Well, the companion hasn't yet. (laughs) Wait, what is... What is this dialogue? Oof, poor Colin Baker started losing hair quick. Bay Arthur, you're back! I've missed you. It's been a minute. So wait, like, legit, the... The companion just changed too. That's hilarious. But, but like, Yet they kept Ace's memories. Are they teleporting? Because that is not where they were like 30 seconds ago. 
So they're teleporting in, everyone's regenerating. Is that what's happening? I I have no idea, man. This is like like just try to imagine yourself in the in the idea of like this is what's gonna save Doctor Who. I'm gonna write the most convoluted bullshit crossover I ever possible. I don't understand why this didn't take off. It's definitely a very child idea of saving Doctor Who. This was written by children, right? Man, yeah. There's a cameo of the How does that legit look like Jackie, though? It actually does, <laughs> damn. That's was there a chance that's the actual same actress? That's middle-aged British woman looks like <laughs> <laughs> My mom looks like Jackie. <laughs> Oh, hey, Susan's here. That dude in the background who just walked by looked like Martin Gatiss. <laughs> okay, what what doctor is that? Is that the sixth doctor? That is, yeah. Yep. Okay. yeah. He looks scarier with age. Yeah, no, like, he aged quick. Like, he legitimately looks like he was the model for Joaquin Phoenix. He looks like a knockoff Will Ferrell. Ah, that's oh, yeah. <laughs> Will Ferrell is the sixth doctor. Let's go. Oh, let's do it. <laughs> what the fuck is happening? This is a space is monorail that? train back there. Why Who does is she look like Mario? <laughs> <laughs> this fucking Mario motherfucker and the the second or the third doctor. There we go. It's so weird how like the third doctor started out looking like old already, but then Pertwee does age like considerably. It, you wouldn't think that it would be a problem with him because he already looks so old with the white hair off the bat and stuff. Is that a wig? I'd say he last he aged more gracefully than Colin Baker did though. We're like the same oh, amount yeah. of time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like he looks the same. He was like, I I think Pertwee is just one of those guys who's like always old, kind of like John Hurt. Uh -huh. You know? Oh, yeah. On a guy's plot. Okay. Oh no. I will say. Of the classic Doctors that I've been forced to see, I think Third is my favorite. I like him a lot. Yeah, Third's good, yeah. Third Doctor's cool. Yeah. Run, Celery Man, run. <laughs> oh, God. I don't wonder if you can run in that cricketer uniform. so funny seeing these fucking EastEnders. Dude, this, close your mouth. This is meant to be like the, like, for British, like, middle-class people. That old woman there is like fucking Andrew Garfield showing up. <laughs> like, oh, it's fucking Peggy! <laughs> like, it's so fucking bad. For, for a minute there, it's like every Doctor pre-regeneration was like a one -er. And then they would just do an effect to switch over to the next winner. It's like they're trying to be artsy and stitching together shots. <laughs> well, it's weird because, like, I, I get the impression that, like, is this show basically, like, Young and the Restless where it's just been on for, like, fucking decades and, like, people have come and gone? So this is, like, a reunion episode for that as well? No, oh, because it's literally EastEnders since it's been going has an uh -huh. episode come out every single day. Oh my god. It's not we- it, okay. it's daily. It's a daily show. And it has continued no, I get... without interruption the entire time. Yeah, but like, actors I assume have come and gone. Well, that. only when they die. <laughs> oh, only when they die. Yeah. The, the characters never come back. People stay on them for a long, long time. Like, they, this would just be the regular cast of the show at the time. Apparently. Oh, what you were saying with like Peggy there, I was like, oh, I assume that was like an actress that like left the show no, at some point. No, no, she stayed on until she died. <laughs> Apparently, EastEnders went from 1985 to now. Yeah, <laughs> and it's an episode every day since 1985. Yeah, they they are the Nicolas Cage of shitty television. Damn, it, it is pain. <laughs> It is absolute pain. It is the most watched show in the UK. Was it necessary? No, nah, that say explains it's a lot. Two? They couldn't have just kept rolling. I mean, it's probably British television. They probably do an episode a day because they're all like ten minutes long. <laughs> you know what? If that's the case, then I suddenly have much less respect for this. <laughs> <laughs> it's not hard to do an episode a day if it's only eight minutes. <laughs> Because 
some of them into a Megazord. I've I've been binging Doctor Who, and to this day, this is the most British thing I have ever seen. <laughs> yeah, this is this this might as well be watching something in a foreign language. Um, <laughs> I mean, pretty much. It, it feels like <laughs> this I, is... I traveled to England, and this was just playing on the hotel TV. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Like this is this is high quality television right here. That's the big mobile. Let's see. Yes. Let's go. Oh, this feels like a bootleg movie. <laughs> like <laughs> this feels like a Bollywood version of Doctor Who, where they got all the actors back for it. Anyway, you, they, you know there would still be a musical number though, and I don't see one yet. Uh, yet. Yeah. Oh my God! They, they got the brigadier, didn't they? Helicopter. Let's go. <laughs> John Pertwee can't do anything unless he's allowed to have multiple vehicles. <laughs> they got they got the budget for a helicopter, but they did not get the budget to fly the helicopter around and get shots of it. So they got the budget to take off and land a helicopter. Oh my god, how, how much gas do we have? We can get five feet off the ground. Cool. <laughs> oh my god, just like... Got stopped for like two seconds. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> what the show? Explain yourself. <laughs> it's wow. you know what though. I yeah. kind of I, I miss. I think we've got past the era where things will fail so badly they're reduced to this. Okay. <laughs> could you, could yeah. you imagine the MCU getting to the point where it just this was the last hope they had? Like that will never happen. I miss when things could die. <laughs> Honestly, this is, I miss, that this is how I miss when you were die. For this. You either you either die a hero or you live long enough or to you see yourself cross over yourself with these standards. <laughs> <laughs> Just what the fuck is going on I'm right so now? Nice. Oh, he's my favorite. He's and that, not just the fucking East End, there's just like fucking carry like whoa, it's him. <laughs> you know, it it's really funny to watch this in the context of oh, I remember this shot. Okay. So this is that weird thing where it's like technically this is in 3D if you just let your eyes lose focus because of shots like this. Mm. Um oh. it's a weird it's a weird like visual effect. Um but regardless of that, uh this is like a Oh, such a weird thing and it kind of like undercuts Tom Baker back in the five doctors like oh I'm not gonna do half a story when he'll come on and fucking do this though <laughs> it was at that point where he was still acting when five doctors came out this is at the uh -huh. point where he's like I need money to pay to live <laughs> <laughs> I would be a lot more I mean that was a quick like seven years then I'd be a lot um, more forgiving of this if it literally was like a bunch of kids doing this for charity, but the fact that this is actually a TV production company is very sad. No, this yeah. is like fucking, this is like public access, like Wayne's World level shit. Like, I promise you, <laughs> PBS has more of a budget than this. Okay, so this was 93. PBC has more of a budget than this. <laughs> <laughs> this was 93, which is funny because the McGann movie's 96. And that gets shit on like crazy, but that's like a billion times better than this. Nine, wait, nope. 93? Yeah. Oh, happy birthday to me. This is, I'm going to watch this on my birthday now. This is, that's when I was born. <laughs> this is how you entered the world, is that yeah. this, this was on TV and it was generating enough time vortex energy to create you. <laughs> Wait. Oh no, I'm gonna go with the fan theory that uh, Matt's parents were watching this just like, oh, this is really getting me fucking hard, like the floating heads and shit. Oh that's, yeah, let's that's, fucking that's go, doable, babe. Because I was born very late in the year in October, so that's doable. You know, you know, that, uh -huh. that, that, that time vortex energy that Steve just explained, that explains why Matt never ages. He was always that Matt kid. Uh -huh. That's he true. Had, yep, there we go. The time vortex. Wait, is that oh it? man, we get three parts. <laughs> That's just a stat cast right there. It is. <laughs> I've never seen that many talented people wasted and, and since the Justice League movie. Oh. <laughs> but is it worse? It's the same aspect ratio. <laughs> <laughs> I need, I need, I need like a black and white version of this that people. I, I need the Doctor is gray. The Doctor is gray. Exclusively on HBO. 
Oh my god. There's John yeah, Nathan no, is... Carter! There he is! The body did it! Know, this I is would, a fucking I would trip, man. I would say this is better than, than, uh... John Nathan! John T! Oh god. Yeah? Because it's watchable. I mean, it's watchable with a laugh, sure, sure. Yeah, no, I, I don't have to commit three hours to it. That's oh, it. no, wait, so it's 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 actually done. Oh, it what? just actually ends out wait, of fucking what? nowhere like that? For real? Point. Oh, that's it. Yeah, that's what I thought, too. It just ends? Behind the scenes. We were not behind the scenes the entire time? <laughs> that, yeah, no, this is a fucking, like... Like, I've given Doctor Who some shit for, like, their shorts, where it's just clearly, like, like the, the, what's the fucking one? Rain Gods with uh, Matt Smith and um, and uh, Alex Kingston. And it's just, like, literally in a gravel quarry, and they're just being walked around by two guys with guns, and then they, like, pretend to cause lightning and run away. And I looked at Alfie, I was like, what the fucking, like... Were they bored on a weekend and just went and filmed this? This is so shit. <laughs> and like, compared to that, this that was fucking like gold. Like, dude, I have no idea what the fuck we just watched. Like, legitimately, I have no idea what just happened I... in everything that we just watched. What conflict was resolved? How the the day was saved? <laughs> I, I I don't I don't know. Um... I'm so lost. <sighs> Yeah, I'm a little... <laughs> like way more effort than it was worth on everyone's part, and there was no effort that to, to be found. I'm man. I'm oh. trying to think of anything that is worse than this that I've seen with my eyes. So own. just <laughs> as the most, let me ask all three of you, okay? So you're the head of the BBC, yeah, and you've uh -huh. you've cancelled this really expensive sci-fi show that kind of gets <laughs> ridiculed, and they're and they're like, wait, wait. And it's not like this This is the people behind that sci-fi show. They're like, wait, we're going to make a pitch to bring oh. us back. And then they show you this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what to is your fair, response to that? <laughs> to be fair, if I was a heartless studio executive at the BBC with bad teeth and no budget, <laughs> and I saw this, my immediate first impression would be, Shit, that looks pretty good. What kind of budget did you guys have? Mm -hmm. And two, that's a whole lot of trouble with a whole lot of people that clearly have nothing better to do. I am sure we could make a ton of money on this by paying no one anything. And I would have immediately greenlighted a new series. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is kind of crazy because, like, it, the next thing that, that comes out after this in Doctor Who chronology is is uh, the McGann movie, and then shortly after that, Big Finish kicks up with their things. But man, this is the show at a fucking low point. It's a little endearing, though, to, to see like everyone come back to try and save the series. It's just, you know, it, it would help if they had writers. Yeah, it, it well, was the writers so... of the show. This is why the show got cancelled to begin with. It was the same. That's why I, I was like, no, there's no way. Because I just, I was watching, paying very close attention to this fucking credits. It's the same fucking production team that Doctor Who had with McCoy, Baker, and fucking Davison. It's the same. Oh, I see why they got cancelled. Because they got to <laughs> make shit like this. It's fucking garbage. Okay, never mind. Well, like, no okay. mind. If, if that if the that's funny... the case, then yeah, no, never mind. You deserve to be cancelled. Like, legitimately. <laughs> and and you know what? Yes, the EastEnders thing is fucking stupid. But you're, but you're Doctor Who, right? And it is... They, the VVC are, like, giving you the thing that everyone watches. <laughs> so it's like, yes, it's stupid. It would be like if fucking... Uh, Jack Septicai was like, "All right, geeks for fun. I'll I'll collab with you, but you've got to do this like Jack Septicai thing." It was like, "Whatever." I fucking jump at the chance because yes, it's not connected to what we do. But there's fucking eyes on your. Pro this is the best marketing opportunity you possibly have. You give this to someone, Russell T. Davis. You could totally imagine Rose and stuff like hanging around with these. Like you can easily get a Doctor Who story out of the because the East Enders premise is just it's fucking England and it's just London it's just a very small part of London and they're just regular people having shitty lives and bad acting that's just Doctor Who without the sci-fi to begin with <laughs> so, it's, so it's like you can do that super easily and just add the sci-fi don't go too crazy with it don't bring in the crazy fucking just maybe the Daleks because everyone likes the Daleks and you have an easy like hook 
to get people in, you get some of the doctors in, like, people will be there for it. But they just can't fucking help themselves. Like, it's legitimately a case of people behind the show had been in behind it for years, and they they maybe at one point understood the appeal of the show, with like early Davison. But they never really got it. And so as it just kept getting cheaper and worse and worse and worse, they never looked at themselves to self-correct. They always just assumed it was an outside force. Like, it's, it's a very, I guess, like, telling example of what happens with creative teams where you just let them have the thing the whole time until they run it into the ground. Because this is literally just what happened. Well, like, it's so weird to, to look at this because, okay... So, Five Doctors, which is kind of the show at, like, not necessarily its hype, but, like, it's it's pretty hype, it's pretty popular at the time, you know, you've got, like, this legacy that you can kind of bank on and stuff, and they, they do the Five Doctors out of. That's 83. Ten years. That's all it took. Ten years to go from, like, what is considered, if not, like, writing quality-wise, but certainly, like, prestige level for the show, it's hype to this that's all it took and it's so funny to know that it's the same creative team because fucking mccoy is the one that people like ride and die for like you said and yet is the same fucking guys so what the shit happened <laughs> um like they i guess this is like the the problem of not being able to tell just like a contained simple story and needing to to constantly go like balls to the wall crazy especially when it's like well beyond any of your limitations um like the fact that you know this shouldn't be a multi-doctor story like at all this should just be a mccoy story or some shit you know and just yeah just have them pop up on the east enders and it's just yeah i remember that time that the doctor showed up on the east enders and and had to do a thing That'd be great. That'd be perfect. It, it would work perfectly well for it. It's like if if you did like a, a fucking 90s Star Trek crossover with like Roseanne, you know? And you just had like, oh yeah, Starship Enterprise just travels back in time and the, or they end up in with, fucking around with Roseanne and shit. It would have been weird, but it would have like been functional. Or like this George just... Reeves showing up on Isle of Lucy. Yeah, very much yeah. that. And, I, and that's the thing with the Doctor, right? Is he's have any fucking character show up on like a drama that's just like in the real world you can fucking buy like because no one has to believe his shit he's just a fucking weirdo like they don't have to like interact with any sci-fi thing that breaks their premise they can just have the doctor show up and be solving a mystery that everyone else around him in this fucking soap opera show are like what the fuck like i i guess usually the office right the Doctor could just walk in there one day and be complete like David Tennant, like completely in character and never show any alien shit and he's just fucking running around doing shit and just have everyone's reactions to it. That'd be so funny. That'd be perfect. You do the exact premise super easy <laughs> and it would hook people on the show because what a lot of people like about Doctor Who is the Doctor. It's a very actor... When we get a new Doctor, it's all the news and stuff. Like People pick their doctor that they like and a lot of people have attachment like just the british public will still like like tom baker or john pertwee or peter david like everyone kind of grows up with a doctor it's just kind of how england is built i guess um so like you've got that nostalgia there where you can just have the novelty of even if you want to do a multi-doctor story just having that character be around at the same street in just multiple different times in his life it's from like the perspective of the normal people so they don't even know it's the same fucking guy but like like you could do something fun with that that's like 20 minutes it doesn't even have to be that in depth or extra but a very simple story that can sell the premise of the show with no fucking budget just the actors and the time but they don't and what i think is really i in my opinion telling about this being the same creative team is the five doctors has the same fucking problem it's the exact same premise where it's all the doctors separated on their own with their companions doing shit that you never quite understand why we're doing it. And then it just fucking kind of ends. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. it's, it, you can see that it is still the same production team. It's just this is them at the end of the line, but they haven't learned. They haven't learned from their mistakes. So when they had the high, the mistakes didn't matter so much because, hey, we're on top. 
when you've got nothing, I think it really shows kind of like, all right, you're creative, what can you do? And it's just kind of lad bad. This very much, it's much shorter and much worse, but it's, you can see that this and the five doctors have a lot in common. Unfortunately so. It is, it is a hot fucking mess. Like, I, I don't know what I expected going into this. You know, I kind of thought it'd maybe be like silly and goofy and, and not make a lot of sense, but like, legitimately, I don't know what I just watched. Like, the fact that it ended and I'm we're sitting there like, okay, now part three is coming up, right? Because there's still, like, ten minutes left in the video or whatever. And it's like, no, no, that was the end. It's like, what? Like, I know we're talking over it, so maybe it's a little unfair, but still, just, like, it's it's 20 minutes. It shouldn't be that hard to fucking follow. Well, I mean, we, we were listening enough to know that there was a plot happening, but it doesn't feel like anything actually got answered by the end. It just stopped. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, no, this is... This is a fucking travesty. Um, I, like... I, I'm so glad we did it this way, because, yeah, I would have been so annoyed watching this without the ability to just, like, scream what the fuck over and over. I, I'm curious, with Doctor Who, and, and given that this is a crossover with another long-running British staple series, I guess, is there a lot of cross-pollination between, like, popular British shows of the era and Doctor Who? Like, are East Enders... <laughs> writers or actors and stuff showing up on Doctor Who or vice versa? Is that a thing? Well, I mean, I think that I'm, I'm a big proponent of the, the theory that the BBC has like 10 actors and just a shit ton of wigs. So I'm going to go with yes. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you the real... No, but it is all in like the same studios and... Oh, okay. You'll see Doctor Who got referenced. Doctor Who became the butt of the, the joke. Like a very easy like make fun of this because it's stupid like doctor who would like show up on sitcoms or um even fucking like game shows they'd have like a doctor who parody segment with like a monster and like it's just literally like a ghost with a sheet over it but it's painted green and he has a silly voice (laughs) filter and it's effectively just the same as most classic Who monsters. <laughs> um, like they, they'll, they'll do that all the time. And then once we that cross pollination, even with the new series, doesn't really end because Russell T Davies has like any time the Doctor Who characters are watching TV or a show like EastEnders or something, and they'll be reacting to like the alien events going on or like British like um, talk shows or whatever. It will be those shows. So there is very much. Like, that, the fucking Ninth Doctor's finale is a fucking parody of Blue Pia. <laughs> like, like, mm-hmm. like, it's like, a, a, like, Big Brother and, and, uh, and the You Are the Weakest Link. Goodbye. Like, it's, <laughs> it's very in, intrinsic to that. We've moved away with that, with Muffet onwards. Um, and I guess I'm just going to be curious, like, if we'll go back to that with Russell T. Dave, because there's not really a British TV landscape anymore that there was in this period. Like, the BBC is just kind of on its la- on its death legs at this point. Um, so I, d- I don't know what that will be. But yeah, like, not necessarily in the staff, but definitely in the culture. Like, everyone knew what Doctor Who was, even if... Like, there's a there was a parody show in the UK, which is about, like, impersonators. And one of the, like, bits every week would they get a Tom Baker impersonator to walk into a um, furniture store and like prank the customer service workers by like walking inside a cupboard and then like not coming out like they'd have like a fake like, exit in it so like he'd get in the cupboard and be like this is my TARDIS I've got to get out and he'd get in and then he wouldn't come back I thought you just they just filmed the customer service people that reacted to like wait holy shit <laughs> so that's that's funny shit like that but like that's Doctor Who was very much always a cultural thing it just at this point in its lifespan, it had fully just become like, ha ha ha, oh, isn't this stupid? Why did we let this happen? That's so sad. Like, it's, it's got its good moments. Like, you know, we, we reviewed a lot of the really bad and, and some of the show's slowest moments, but I've watched Classic Who stuff that's like legitimately good, legitimately interesting, and it's always a little tongue in cheek, so it always helps you get through some of the worst parts. Um, so to, to see the show get to this, I mean, like, fucking Star Trek is is really the only comparison because they, they have a very similar, like, lifespan. It's just Star Trek's revival was in the 90s and and who was in the 2000s. But, like, it's, it's so weird because it's just that very similar kind of downfall. But even fucking Star Trek never got, like, this desperate, 
you know, Enterprise is bad, but it's not this bad. Well, Star Trek <laughs> oh. always had like a reputation for being like the serious sci-fi show that people took seriously. And even when it got to its low points, people still respected like the brand of, of Star Trek in a way where I don't think they did with Doctor Who, at least from the way Alfie's describing it. Even with something like in, in the same realm as of Goofy as like Power Rangers, like... Power Rangers is, is goofy as shit, and there was a, a period of time where it was canceled and, and no series was airing, and there was a lot of, like, parodies of how, like, goofy and dumb Power Rangers as a concept is. Mm. But Power Rangers never cared about it, and it persisted pretty well to the point where the cancellation almost doesn't even matter, because a new series got bought and produced less than five years after it got canceled. So, like, even on, on the spectrum of, like, American goofy things that people make fun of, I don't think I've ever seen anything that, that, that feels like this depressingly on its last legs begging to be shot dead. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, this is... This is bad. <laughs> so matt does this make you want to go watch a bunch of classic doctor who like really to really understand each of these doctors and like the intricacies of the characters it really doesn't it just feels like this is i mean yes obviously of course this is like the best thing i've ever seen so i cannot wait to to go consume more of it but no this was um this was sad sad is the word i'm coming (laughs) up with that's that's really the word that is coming to my mind this was just sad to watch like you see all these like highly beloved icons of british popular culture these actors who have played the doctor many of them phenomenal in their own right and you just see them reduced to this and it is the saddest thing it's it it's just this is the worst fucking thing i've ever seen in my life and uh <laughs> i don't know if you guys have seen the the new chip and dale rescue rangers movie i don't know I why know. you yeah. but um, i liked it it's it's good uh, legitimately i actually really liked it but it, it does sort of have a little bit of commentary on that with like that you do sort of reach a point where you are entirely cast out and the only thing you can do is like scrape together the publicity shots of when you were famous and hope that's enough to get by um mm. the, the fucking like this convention scene with ugly sonic um mm-hmm. really screams of this kind of thing where it's like you can't even you don't even have time to like pity the state you're in because you have to pretend like, like this image you crafted is worth selling to people still the uh, the mm. quote i guess that i want to use to apply to that steve is kind of i guess a happy ending for this but it can also be equally sad depending how you look at it i i want to look at it as a happy ending is um Big Finish, the people who make the audio dramas, which started out as a fan thing and is now relatively big, and they let all the classic op- doctors come back and do their audio stories and, and keeps them in work. It's been described as the retirement home for classic Doctor Who actors. As, oh. as you know, like they, they don't, it's fucking hard when you're that old and you have to, the only way you can make money is by going to conventions and saying this thing. So instead of like, hey, do you want to do this audio story and you can record it at home and you can come in the studio and act and be your doctor and feel accomplished, but then you get a nice paycheck and you get to go home and you can do it when at any time you want. Like, fuck man, that's that's what we should be doing with these these retired beloved actors who like, we're not gonna, like we shouldn't be forcing them on the fucking... Yes, <laughs> like it's just it's just fucking humiliating for them, you know. Like it's and it's not and then the convention scene as well. Like it's nice that they they love the fans and stuff, but it very much is what some other actors have talked about. It's like some of the only way they can make money when when it's, as like the only gigs they can get is going on these convention scenes. And I think the from the clips I've seen of that Chip and Dale thing, they kind of captured that decently well of like the vibe of that. So again you can kind of look at the big finish thing as also kind of like well this is now they have to make doctor who fanfics for the rest of their fucking lives until they pass on but they have they all they all like it and they all enjoy it and it's it's a much comfier respectable kind of way they can go out on it and still be attached to the show without again being reduced to because this is the last fucking thing John Pertwee was in before he passed away. Oh, that's and, cool. Except the fan film. And I, yeah, and even even then, that's the fucking bootleg fucking fan. I, I kind of hate that, man. I kind of, I kind of uh-huh. pissed me off. Like, I do like 
that this won't be the last thing. Like Tom Baker, obviously Tom Baker got another thing later on, but like for everyone else, like Peter Davis and Colin Baker, when they'll get up there in these years, I, I do like that the error of this. I was talking about how I liked that things used to be able to die, production-wise for sure. But for the actors, I, I I do like that we've at least with Doctor Who found a better way to take care of them, and like a lot of other companies and stuff. I like. When Tom Holland gets in his fucking eighties, like I don't, I don't know what they're gonna be keep doing like the new Spider Man shit, you know? Like I, that's gonna be. There's a lot of other companies and stuff with actors that get to an, a certain age where they just cast them out, and I do think Doctor Who used to be that, and now the fans have literally made a company to stop that from happening. <laughs> no, yep, no, it's it's a it's a good thing and a bad thing. Because some big finish shit is really weird, yeah. and then people get like very attached to it. And it's like okay, uh, whatever. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's just a fucking weird monstrosity of a, a production to watch. And I mean, of course, because it's BBC, <laughs> it's like I have so much more respect for like the incompetencies of like. Lucasfilm or Disney or Fox or Warner Brothers with like how they fuck up because like even Ezra Miller's rampage through Hawaii <laughs> is not as like going to turn out as unwatchable a thing as what we just experienced <laughs> like mm. it's just when you, when you look at like the Hollywood machine <laughs> um, there's, there's something to the uh the legitimacy of a production that this just did not have um the the standard of quality that did not exist here there's definitely like a, a bright side to nostalgia i mean there's a lot of negatives that we can get into all day but there is a bright side to like watching something from 1963 that meant a lot to you as a kid and watching it kind of trug along through most of your life and, and adjust to the times with you and wanting to keep that in some way, not as as a way to like kind of pull it through time um, as like a security blanket, but more along the lines of like this was important and we don't need to we don't need to punch down on it. We just kind of have to preserve its memory. And I feel like Doctor Who does a pretty decent job of, of getting that treatment from its fans in large part, especially prior to the reboot, because there was no one else who really cared about it at that point. And so seeing something like this, I feel like there is a lot of sincerity to this. Like the idea that someone would literally just take the production budget of a TV show completely detached from it and want Doctor Who to come back so much that they get everyone out to try and do something like this. Like that's, that feels meaningful. That well, feels impactful. That feels sincere. It's just, it sucks. Well, the, the extra funny thing is there's also an attempt at a, uh, a chart topping song to save Doctor Who as well. Oh god, what? That's oh, that's Do like Doctor in Distress, yeah. Yeah, what? there's like a they they wrote a like a song that was like meant to try to try to be a pop song to top the charts to show the BBC that the public really wanted Doctor Who back. That's... It did not top the charts. It did not do particularly well. Wait, wait, wait. You're you're telling me like an actual musician created Doctor in Distress? No, so they got all the cast members to sing. That's even worse, what? And they can't sing none of them can sing. <laughs> are you are you telling me that Gal Gadot's a fucking viral COVID song is not the first time we did this? No. Yeah, no. yeah. Hundred percent. Oh my god! Um, I can't believe. That. Like, oh, there's even a music video. Uh, the music was played by Hans Zimmer on a Fairlight Two synthesizer. <laughs> what the fuck? I'm looking this up now. What the fuck? Hans Zimmer wrote this. <sighs> yeah. So, uh, anyway. I think I think that'll do it. Uh, is there even a point in giving a rating? Does anyone all right, does anyone have a rating over zero out of five no. for this? No, no. I don't want to. I don't want to kick a dead horse. Mine would be a I, negative. I do. Five I do want to kick this. I'll kick it. <laughs> Bang! There you okay, go. Alfie. You can you can give your rating if you want. I'll give this a. 
I go back in time and strangle myself as an infant child so I never like Doctor Who and never have to suffer <laughs> this. And also, before I do that, go back in time during the paradox and uh, kill everyone in the BBC headquarters and then uh, give John Pertwee a big hug and, and say I'm sorry <laughs> before the paradox hits me and I vanish dramatically. And he looks solemnly at the camera for smiling <laughs> out of five <laughs> okay then uh, so we'll be back next week with uh, more new who it's funny we I really should have like had us talk about time crash after this but just that was the one to prep and watch beforehand and this was the commentary so we'll be back to talk about some new who talk about day of the doctor the uh, the second New Who multi doctor story, um, with David Tennant, Matt Smith, and John Hurt, um, and yeah, that'll that'll be a thing. Anyway, uh, until next time, everyone. Thanks very much for watching. I'm the philosopher. I am broken, broken man. <laughs> Sorry. I am the champion of Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> Steve. Steve. He already said it. Already said. Oh, he did? Yeah. I missed it. Uh, you guys yeah. must have talked over him or something. Open your eyes! Uh, <laughs> 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 they are open, but I can't hear with those. Uh, until next time. Um, we, and we are your geeky gentlemen. We'll be discussing things. I don't even fucking know what I'm doing anymore. I don't. This, this, this broke me. Colin Farrell, Dr. Webb. <laughs> 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 <laughs>